Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zimbulo. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to take a look at what's new in ZimCat at ZimJS.com. So ZimJS.com, and we can press on the cat and pop on over to the new side. The synth, the wire, the text editor, the synth again, the poly. Hmm, we could look at these two right here, the Zim page. We looked at the line and the poly last time. But we'll look at Zim page, and that's what we're using right now. We'll look at those effects as we slide back and forth on Zim. Well, that's Zim pages, and we've had that for a while, and we've applied a new effect to Zim pages called, well, it's, it uses the, um, the Zim emitter, and that's pretty cool. But we also have Zim page, so woohoo, yay, we finally have a page, and we'll talk about that. Also, we're able to now load assets without preloading assets or without going through the motions of preloading assets. It still actually preloads the assets in behind. <laughs> uh, delayed preloading. How does that sound? Um, so uh, let's take a look at, at those two examples. How about we'll start with the cat and then we'll take a look at the pages after. All right. So if we press on here. We have a purring cat. I believe we looked at this example. I can't remember for sure when we were looking at the synthesizer because indeed the Zim synth is what's playing this sound using the purr is a play. And as you roll over, there it starts purring again. And when you press it, oh, there's the synth playing a tone. So one, one is with the sound and one is with the tone. But that was all under synth, so that's not what we're really caring about right now. What we care about is how this cat picture was loaded. So let's go take a look at that. Reduce that. <laughs> Stop. I'll reduce it down and we'll come back into the code. <laughs> yes, with <laughs> purring cat. <laughs> I have enough cats on in my mind. Like, I don't know if you guys uh, realize it, but yeah, I have a window behind me. You probably, I mean, you may have run across this before. But uh, I would say about a tenth of the time I do bubbling videos, the cat starts scratching at the window, wanting in. <laughs> Two cats. So, I've had enough of the cats. So here we are in Zim. We're going to scroll down. And, oh, this is in page, though. Wait a minute. That's the page example. We'll come back to that. So here's the sounds example. And we're loading in Zim Cat, as you can see there. Now... Let's look closely at this area here. This is where we usually would load assets. We'd probably store it because we're storing these as variables. We'd probably store the asset as a variable here and the path as a, var a variable here. Really, all we want to do is pass them in after the outer color. So that would be whatever the asset is would go here. And whatever the path is would go there. And what happens is all those assets, the assets might be an array of assets, all those assets would get loaded. And when they're all loaded, the frame would be ready. And that way we can start using them as asset this, asset that, asset the other thing. And the old way of doing it in Zim, well, actually, now I guess this might be the old way of doing it in Zim, but a previous way, a prior way of do using it in Zim was uh, using frame.loadasset. So we would just come right into the frame and it'd be ready right away pretty well and make a stage and be really quick. And then we would say, inside here, we would say frame.loadassets and we would wait for a complete event. So it was a, a two-stage process. Well, um, now with respect to assets anyway, we no longer have to add them in this way if we don't want. We can just come on right down here and use the asset right like so. So just um, doing something like, what are we doing? We're cursoring, scaling. We didn't even add it. We must have added it later. Mouse over, where Where does it get added? Who's, who's adding this asset? Per synth, there's the cat, cat dot on, mouse down. Well, that's funny. How can that cat be being added? On resize, okay, so it's, it's right in here. Um, you may have noticed that we've got Zim full screen. So this is, oh, I rolled over the cat and there's my purring again. Um, <laughs> I can't concentrate. Come on, cat. That's enough. It's a random number of times it purrs to like three to seven or something. And it's still going. <laughs> Stop even. Well, I can turn it off that way. All right. Um, this is full screen. 
So it will need to, if, if we adjust the size of this screen, as we, we can do here, are you ready? We are centering the cat uh, on there. So to do that, we use the frame dot on resize, and we're just positioning it a certain amount from the center uh, because the cat is a little bit off-centered itself. It's got a long tail. And because we're doing that, there's no reason to even add it at the beginning because the pose will do that adding for us automatically on resize, and resize happens automatically at the start. So <laughs> there's a long explanation, huh? Uh, but under normal circumstances, if we were using the fit mode, we would probably want something like dot center in here, and that would center it on the stage, or that fancy pose that we did. We could put it right there. But isn't that neat? It's just, there it is, and we don't even need to store it in a variable if we don't want. We are because we're, we've got a, an on mouse over and we're uh, playing the purr sound based on that. But uh, that would just put the cat right there and we don't need to preload it. So how it does that is it, if the asset is being called, and this is Zim in the background now is going to be thinking, if the asset is called and um, or, or sorry, if, if the asset function here is called and the asset was not collected and, and not loaded, there is nothing in the Zim assets, then it will make a container for the assets so that it can be scaled. We can't just do nothing because there's stuff that needs to happen to it. Um, so we've made a placeholder container and then these other things will operate on that container. Now scale's okay, but uh, it can operate on a container no problem. But something like pose, where we're trying to pose it from the left, or the, I guess from the right, needs to know how wide the asset is for that pose to happen. Even center needs to know how wide the, uh, the asset's going to be so it can properly center that container. So that added complexity, and we never really thought that we could do that. However, we gave it some thought and figure it out a way. Basically, when we center something or pose something, if the object is this empty asset container, we don't actually do anything at that point. We record the fact that, we, that that was desired. And then when the asset loads in, that at that point, we actually position it. And um, so there's a little bit of trickery going in behind here that is making that work. Now, hopefully that will work in all cases. I mean, we've tested a number of different cases, but <coughs> time will tell. It may be that under certain situations, like, hey, we've got a sprite in a lo and a loader and then this, and you know, like, and it's not working because the asset didn't come in. I hope that that's not the case, but um, it's possible. So just watch that. In other words, for simple things, it's certainly probably fine if you're lazy. But I would recommend you still load your assets through the traditional way. That way you know that you've got your assets there. They're, they're ready to show. Um, this potentially might load a little bit later visually. And, and maybe you don't want that. So you, you'll see some things. And it's like HTML. HTML doesn't actually preload its images. They just pop in whenever. So you have now that happening on the canvas. Whereas traditionally on the canvas, we didn't work that way. Traditionally, it was like, no, let's preload the images because we want to know they're there. Now, there was always that load assets that we could do later on, but that's when we, you know, we had control over it. We knew we're, we're only showing thumbnails right now. There's no point in showing all the main images until we get to a section that has the main images. No problem. We've always done that on the canvas. But... Uh, we haven't done the thing where, hey, just load this asset in whenever, <laughs> whenever you feel like it, <laughs> whenever it can, whenever it arrives, and that's what's happening here. So in the background, what is happening is it's um, it's still preloading this. It's just, it's just basically this is calling load asset, or sorry, load assets plural. The remember the original way that we were loading assets in Zim, that's being done in the background. Once the assets are loaded, it then inserts it into the container. One more thing about that. When you load assets through the, the frame here, or through load assets, you end up with a bitmap object. Okay, The result of that asset at whatever is a bitmap object. It just points to a bitmap object. This does not point to a bitmap object. It points to a container. 
that has been given the type image. All right, so if you load your images in this way, then you're in a container with a type image. Uh, it just made me think, what would it say if we were loading in a sound? I can't remember. I, I, I think this works with sound too, but I'm not totally positive. <laughs> There's been a lot of updates. <laughs> You'll have to check that out. But um, in general, it's, it's always uh, been more of a, an image um, issue. Okay, so there we go. Neat, huh? I don't know if that's too much information. Maybe maybe you don't care, but this is one of the things that's bubbling. Certainly, this will be of interest to people because, hey, to load an image, that's all you need. It would be dot .center. You could have your ZIM file. It's just, there you go. Uh, you can pass in a width and a height here if you so desire, and I can't remember how we handled it with the path. I'm not sure if you have to just put the, the full path here or not, or if there was another path parameter later on. By putting in the width and height, then it will position right away. It won't delay that positioning. Not that you'll notice, but um, I mean, it it reduces it reduces some workload in the back. Uh, like I said, not that you'll notice. If you're loading a thousand assets, maybe you'll notice. If you're loading a hundred assets, probably you won't notice. But I would recommend if you are loading 100 assets that you do it the traditional way rather than calling a load asset for every single asset. All right, load assets plural will um, uh, handle an array of assets in a nicer manner than instigating a new load for each asset. Okay, great. That's enough of that blah, 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 huh? You still with me? I tell you, this one, if you haven't seen the last bubbling, you should have a listen to that. It's probably about the silliest bubbling I think I've ever done. Uh, I don't want this one to be this way. So I've gotten grumpy. <laughs> there we go. This is the grouchiest one that I've ever done. Uh, although in saying so, it's probably moving along to being silly, isn't it? All right. So assets, what were, uh, did I make any changes to this? Do you remember? We better undo. I think we did make some changes. So that's all that undone. Well, let's go take a look at that page, though. Um, we can't swipe that. Uh, well, we can swipe this. We can hit it. Here it is right here. This is the Zim page example, which is very similar to what we've just been going through, where as I swipe, it says, presenting at last, Zim page. Swipe is just a container with a rectangle backing. There you go. The problem was, is we had people, we had, we've always had pages, which allows you to swipe between pages. But then people tended to ask, and even maybe if they didn't see pages, they say, how do you make a page? Uh, I don't know how to make a page in Zim. What do you do? Well, the easy answer was make a container. And after years of saying, make a container, just make a container. <laughs> you can make a container. And I mean, they have no problem with that. People just say, oh, okay. And then they make a container, put things in the container. But maybe, uh, like I said, this, this Zim has been to sort of fill in the gaps. So anything over the last five, six years, um, the, the growth of Zim up to Zim 10, what we've tried to do in Zim Cat is answer any questions, fill in the gaps of anything we were missing. And so we made a Zim page. <laughs> Yay! And it's a rectangle with a backing. Did you catch that one, by the way? Look, so I swipe up, or, you know. Uh, neat, huh? These are the effects. That one doesn't use an emitter, but that's a new effect. And then we know... Oh, but now we know what to use with Zim page, right? There was another transition, kind of this explosion thing. And pages has new transitions. So uh, there's a transition, these lines. And there's the bubbles, by the way. This goes both ways. And there's little rectangles. Cool. And there's... Uh, default or colors that can be set. So these are Zim colors. Some of these that didn't have a color, though that color was not Zim colors. That was called dark. That was called dark. This was called light. Do you see how that those are light lines? Dark lines. Light lines. <laughs> dark lines. And Zim bubbles, but you've also got light bubbles and dark bubbles. I don't know if there's any light bubbles or dark bubbles in here. Those all seem to be. Um, so anyway, that's Zim Pages. Let's pop into the code and have a look and see how we did all that. We brought in Zimcat, the latest version of Zim. 
down we go. Here it is, a new page. Have a look at that. Wow, new page. Here's the size of the page, so the width and height. And what we've done is made it easy to do a gradient. I mean, gradients are a bit of a pain, aren't they? You got to do an array of the colors. You got to do an array of the proportions. You got to do a starting x, a starting y, and ending x, and ending y. And if it's radial, you got to do even more than that. So it's often led me not to make gradients. <laughs> We considered simplifying that and giving some defaults, and maybe maybe we should just say, hey, if you just give me two colors in there, then you're going to get a gradient between those two colors. You don't have to say zero and one. You don't have to say it starts at the left and goes to the right, and or top and goes to the bottom. But we still have, uh, yeah, <laughs> darn, it's one of those things we could have put in Zimcat, huh? <laughs> anyway, in this case, we're, we've sort of done it on the page. You're able to just gradient between those two colors really, really nice and easy. And that's it. That's all there is for the page. And really, all it is is a container with a rectangle in the background. Just beware. That means that your page already starts with a backing. You can access it with a backing property. So if you're if you're using uh, the levels of things, you know, or bot, if you put something at the bot of a page, you're not going to see it. You want to try that? So here's the page dot icon on the first page. And if we go dot bot <laughs> like that, that means we've just put this icon at the bottom of its container. And its container is page one. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, well, there's what the icon looks like normally. And we're going to open this up in a browser. Oh. Uh, the icon on the first page is, is right here normally. So that's where it's supposed to be, but we just put it to the bottom of the page. Oh, well, <laughs> it could just be hiding behind the circle. <laughs> so uh, where's the circle? So Well, there's the circle. Here's the icon. Yeah, but we'll get rid of the circle then to make sure that it's not... Hopefully we can just get rid of that. Yeah, okay, so circles not hiding the icon. What's hiding the icon is the backing. So if you want, we could do something like page one dot backing dot alp for alpha is 0.5. You know that we could do dot alpha or we could say it all alpha equals 0.5 and apply the alpha property. All right, but I've gotten used to the chainable methods now for the most part. Dot alp plus it reminds me of skiing like alpine. And there you go. So now we've set the backing of the page to an alpha of 0.5. And as you can see, when we, when we put the icon to the back, it's gone behind uh, that, the backing. So hopefully that's clear for you. Uh, where did we put the bot? So when we don't do the bot, it will bring it up. We can still keep the alpha, it doesn't matter. There it is. No, no alpha is affecting this thing, but the alpha is still on the backing. Now we remove the alpha on the backing. And we get this. There it is. Nice. I huh? like gradients. Yeah. And then here is what it looks like with the circle back. Um, there we go. <laughs> kind of a cheat way to get the, the Zim into a circle. Uh, by the way, that's probably done with just make icon. There is a way to set the backing of the icon to be clear. And then then we, you know, what would that have given us? Uh, not much difference anyway. So there's the stuff in a page. Now, what do we do with these pages? There's the second page. There's a third page. So each page is just sitting here. We don't even add them. If you take a look, these pages are not even added anywhere. Uh, we're centering stuff on the page, and this is a fake indent. We just sort of said, uh, all that stuff's for page one. Really, that should be like that. But uh, for clarity, we're saying, hey, here's the stuff in page one. Here's the stuff in page two, page three. You don't need to do that if you don't want. None of those is added because they're, at, they're put inside of the pages object. So here's the new pages object where we say, hey, this is page one, and it's going to swipe in this manner. So that's how we're swiping to the left and the right and up and down. And then here's page two, and we're swiping in this other manner. We're applying an overall transition effect of bubbles in. But anyway, this pages that we're making here, all of this stuff, 
that is what we're adding to. If we don't have the add to there, if we didn't add the pages object, we would see this. Nothing, not there. So we put all of the pages in the pages object, and then we let the pages object uh, control what is showing on the stage. That's not new. That's been how the pages object works. What is new, though, is the type of transitions. There are other transitions, traditional slide and fade and uh, what other ones? Uh, I can't remember. Dip to black or black and light. And so there's other traditional transitions, but we've just added all of these new transitions now. Pixel, so the pixels, those are a bunch of squares that kind of fly around, and the three colors. Bubbles, and the three colors, so these are circles, and the three colors. Lines, so these are slats, and the three colors, and explode, and the three colors. As well, you can, I'm going to comment these out, as well, you can add into the transition a custom transition. You can also, this is the overall transition that the deep that will turn the default transition to be bubbles in. But what we're doing here is passing in a transition table so that we could feature these different transitions. We're pa this is the speed of the page moving. Uh, by the way, in the transition table, we could also specify a different speed as well. I think that's probably the next parameter, but we're not going to. Uh, so this is a transition table that's saying when you go from page 2 to page 3, use pixel zim rather than bubble zim. Okay, you see that? And there they are. Fan. Fan is a new one as well. I suppose that wasn't listed. These are the, these are the emitter transitions. But we've also added uh, a conventional transition called fan, which sort of does that angled, uh, rotates the page. Thing. Neat, huh? And then here are these other specific ones. Did we give you an example? No, I don't think we did, but you can put in your own emitter. For instance, page two to page, well, why don't we just make it the default one here? We could just say new emitter. And inside this emitter right here, you would put all of uh, whatever you want to um, organize for that. Now, if uh, I suppose this is helpful information right here, check it out in the docs. But if you use vertical or horizontal in here, that those are parameters of the emitter. If you use vertical or horizontal true, then it's going to emit along the edge of the page. And just be careful there. You might have to think about this uh, as to how you, you might have to have two of them, one for vertical or one for horizontal. But if you're only swiping horizontal, then... Um, you know, you would have horizontal true would, oh, vertical true, actually. If you had vertical true, then that would run along the vert, you know, the vertical page. And as you're swiping horizontally, that would look, uh, that would look cool. So that's what we're doing here, for instance. When I swipe, uh, these bubbles are vertically aligned. And here, those, those pixels are vertically aligned along there and it will figure out the height of your page for you. I think it does on that anyway. Now if you don't um, that that one right there you see that if you or do it again boop if you use an emitter and you don't say vertical or horizontal then it's going to do kind of like that explosion thing. So here, here's what that looks like. I'm going to save this now. I hadn't saved that. So I'm going to save this, and we're going to see what a default transition of just a new emitter looks like as we go from the front page. So I refresh hmm, F11, something something that did broke, F12, missing argument after list 101. Oh, I forgot a comma. Uh, so new emitter right there. So we've got a new emitter there. Let's refresh our page. Refresh. And are you ready for this uh, spectacular effect? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, my. So what's happening here, there it is. That, that's the effect, the, the, those little spits. Um, because uh, the emitter only runs for a, a small amount of time, what you're seeing is a, a spurt. Of a you know of the emitter over that small amount of time and and it's a little bit small and that's that's all you're getting. You could make that happen more by saying num 
colon 10 or something like that, that will make it spurt, or well, every time the emitter runs, it, uh, well, sorry, every time it emits, every time it emits a particle, it will emit 10 particles instead of one particle. So this will make it at least 10 times as many particles. They're still probably not going to be big enough. But I refresh here and now you see how they all kind of make a ring and there's gravity. They're emitting from the center. Oh, I don't have to go into emitters, do I? Anyway, they're emitting from the center and then they're all emitting at the same force. So you probably want to change the force here, force colon, to a min force of say three and a max force of say 10. And we're using the zim v value to pass that in there. So in other words, the force, which normally just accepts a number, would make all particles operate on that number. If we pass in a random number, it would make all particles operate at that same random number that we passed in. But if we pass in a zim v value for the parameter of a, a min and a max, or we could pass in an array and it would pick from the array, or we could blah, 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 pass in a function, it would pick from the, re the return of the function, or a series. We could make the force happen in a series. Start off, uh, I wonder what that would look like with an emitter. That would be really cool because it would start off maybe at a small force and then the force would get bigger. E each particle that got emitted would get bigger. You see how powerful that is? Like it's amazing. So anyway, we're going to now stop that ring from happening. And so we refresh here. You see, it didn't make the ring. All the, all the particles didn't go at the same force. And that's uh, that's a little bit nicer. <laughs> and we even have a soundtrack for that. <laughs> well, see if it, uh, somebody got the phone. Oh, no, there it is. There is the soundtrack. <laughs> nice. Um, if uh, we wanted to, we could make all of those different sizes, etc. So you control what you do inside of this emitter to basically control uh, your effect. And once again, if we if we said vertical here, vertical, vertical, colon, true. I hope. Anyway, I think this is how we've arranged it. So there's the vertical true. And let's see, we may have to, it may just take the default size of the emitter, which is 100 by 100. You can't really tell what the size of an emitter is, but it's, its bounding box is 100 by 100, and it may only do vertical along that. So let's see. Yeah, well, that was a square. We want the circles. Yeah, do you see what's happening? I think it's only taking those bubbles along 100. It looks like it's not doing the whole height of the page, which means you would want a height, colon stage width, stage width in there. All right, this is becoming more of an explorer, isn't it? Hopefully you don't mind too much. I mean, <laughs> you can always pause and watch later, pause, get a cookie and watch later. But uh, if you're still with us, that's great. Uh, I'm glad you're here. It would be neat to be here in person, wouldn't it? You know, like, wouldn't we just love to code? Oh, you can always come. I, I, you know, I teach I teach at a college called Sheridan, Sheridan College. If you're around the world and feeling like a journey to Canada, <laughs> uh, Sheridan's where I teach. Anyway, height, stage width. So let's see if that fixes her up there. We could see each other in person. That would be fun. Yeah, uh, it's more spread out, though. And not only that, but it looks like it's ping-ponging everywhere, doesn't it? Ping-pong! <laughs> Ping-pong! Um, that, that's the angle. So you might want to have an angle that, um, that says don't go everywhere, specify an angle. And that's indeed how we do... You see how that effect, how that's different? It sort of trails it. That's because all the angles are pointing in this direction. I think what we did for you automatically is when we flip one way or the other, we rotate the emitter so that, you know, if you had it looking good, swiping left to right, and then you turn the direction, you have no way of rotating that emitter. So I believe we did that for for you. So the angle would go, <laughs> it's just one thing after another, isn't it? The angle would go in here. Uh, angles are... Uh, they point to the right. They point to the right along the x-axis. So let's, I'll just keep it simple. We could apply the min and the max or a range or whatever we wanted there. But, uh, well, min and max is a range. Um, but we'll just hard code this. If we said uh, zero, so an angle of zero, that means all of these will be pushed out at this force at an angle of zero. And let's see what that does to our little bubbles now. 
Um, actually, that looks pretty good. I think that's the angle that we want, isn't it? See that? They're all they all just got pushed out on on that angle. Yeah, that's that's not bad. Boop. It's about the same. There's probably some fiddling about we went and did. And by the way, that fiddling about is available in Zim. All this is, you know, viewable. You would you would go to the docs on pages and you would say view at the bottom. You want to quickly say that, see that, and then that's the, the last we'll do. So if we hit docs here. This is the docs for page though, because that's what was new. Uh, the docs for pages, if we add an S to that, or probably could have just hit go again, here, here are the pages. And if you scroll on down to any of these, hopefully we don't have a problem here, but you hit view, there it is. So this is all the code that went into the pages. And at some point in here, we deal, there's the transition stuff for sliding. And here are the slide emitter names. And what is that? Animate, those, no, those are the traditional transitions. There's some more slide things. Here they are right here. So there's the emitter for the lines. Here's the emitter for something else. Oh, I think maybe they're all, yeah, it's for the line, for the line light, for the line zim. Else it's going to be these other emitters. And that's it. So you can kind of take a look at what we put in there for the life of things and the number of things and the decay time to see how the default uh, emitters were made. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, 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 yep. This has been a What's Bubbling is in And I am Dr. Abstract. Another lengthy one. We've got a few more bubblings to go. Can you believe it? Yeah, Zimcat was quite the launch. Got a few more bubblings to go. And of course, you can probably, by the time you're hearing or watching this bubbling, there there's a whole slew of bubblings out. Uh, who knows? You could be at, you know, five years in the future watching this bubbling. Yay! Hello, future person. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. Come join us. Zimjazz.com slash Slack. If you want to talk about anything, we'd love to have you here. If you need help with anything, we'd love to help you. Bye-bye. Ciao.